Am I cheating here? I'm not sure. Uh, I did start the, uh, decided to start the podcast, Riding with James podcast, but I don't want the, the vlog to completely go away either, uh, so we'll use it from time to time um, when, when I need to. And this is going to be one of those times, because and, and it is actually connected to the podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll get into some other stuff here in a little bit, but just to get right into the, the purpose of it, uh, I wanted to do a podcast based on uh, stories from other people about how they became pro wrestling fans. So if you are a pro wrestling fan, uh, if you could just in the comment section, and I'm going to put something up on the community thing too. Uh, either in, well, either in the comment section or in the uh, if you want to email it to me, you can send it to uh, wfsportsx at gmail.com. Just give me a, a quick well, it doesn't even have to necessarily be quick. Uh, just just tell your story about how you got into pro wrestling, how you became a fan. Uh, feel free to tell your wrestling stories if you want to you know, talk about the first time you saw pro wrestling live, anything like that. And I just thought it might be uh, kind of fun to, to kind of put that together. And, and uh, this is any era. If you, if you are a wrestling fan or you were a wrestling fan, but you don't really like today's stuff. For me... Uh, it was uh, actually uh, my brother-in-law because and I got into it kind of late compared to a lot of other people uh, I was probably around 13 and I was aware that there was this thing called pro wrestling prior to that but I didn't really know much about it the only time I ever saw people I knew were pro wrestlers was the, the older bigger scarier guys the ox baker kind of looking uh, pro wrestlers and uh, but because of the fact that, you know, it wasn't in the newspaper, it wasn't, they didn't talk about it on during the, the sports broadcast and uh, on the news or anything like that, you didn't have results anywhere. Uh, I didn't really pay that much attention to pro wrestling. And um, when my brother-in-law came into the family, uh, we were sitting around one Saturday afternoon. We had just got uh, what was then called WTBS on our cable system. And of course, it was out of Atlanta at the time. It was just Channel 17 out of Atlanta. And uh, we're sitting there in Texas watching this local station out of Atlanta, and uh, which at the time was just mind-blowing. And of course, they had uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling on Saturday afternoons. And he was a big wrestling fan. So he wanted to watch it, and I thought, well, you know, and to be honest, at first, I just really didn't Get it. I just I didn't I really wasn't that much into it, but I thought well you know it's kind of my way of bonding with him, getting to know him. We'll watch wrestling. Okay, fine. And uh, of course this was um, late '81 going into '82. The first angle I really remember was if you if you watched any Georgia wrestling back in the day, Kevin Sullivan and Austin Idol were supposed to be Austin Idol had just turned good guy. And they were supposed to be tagging together against the Fabulous Freebirds, which at the time was just Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy. Buddy Roberts wasn't in the mix yet. And it was the uh, the infamous uh, four flat tires angle where you know they're supposed to wrestle on TV and Austin Idol doesn't show up. And so everybody's like, oh, see, you know, knew you couldn't trust Austin Idol. Even Gordon Soley saying, oh, this is just Austin Idol showing his true colors and this, that, and the other. Uh, Kevin Sullivan had to go into the match with just some random guy as his tag team partner and uh, of course they lost and then Austin Idol shows up later and Gordon Soley is looking at him who's the announcer looking at him saying uh, I'm surprised you showed your face here sir he kept saying well I had a flat tire I, I, tried, I got here as soon as I could I had a flat tire and then the Freebirds come out and they're going back and forth and Michael Hayes says something like it's no excuse you had four flat tires and Austin Idol says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said I had a flat tire. How did you know I had four flat tires? And, of course, it turned out, you know, it was the free birds that had flattened his tire so he couldn't get there. And that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good angle. That caught my attention. But I still, I wouldn't, I was like, well, I, I can take it or leave it. And 
uh, we're sitting around uh, Saturday night one night. You know, that'd be cool. We're gonna watch TV again. I'll get over watch Saturday Night Live or something. And, uh, he's flipping around the channels and he comes across Channel 11 out of Dallas and the Saturday Night Wrestling Show out of Fort Worth. And he looks at me all excited and I'm like, oh, great. Wrestling again. Okay. And of course that turned out, it was at the time it was just Saturday Night Wrestling. Uh, big time wrestling out of the Dallas area. And that was right at the end of Fritz von Erich's career. Uh, it was that era, just as Fritz von Erich's career is winding down. Of course, he had Kevin, I think David, that, that, that maybe at that particular time had just gone to Florida. And uh, they would eventually have the, they would eventually change their name to World Class Championship Wrestling. And their first match was the, the big card at Texas Stadium, Fritz's retirement match, uh, where he won the American, the American Heavyweight Championship from King Kong Bundy. And when we started watching the wrestling out of, out of the Dallas area and you had Devon Eriks, they were the big stars. and I, I got a little more into it. And then uh, eventually the Freebirds moved over from Georgia. I was familiar with them. And I was like, well, hey, that's kind of cool, you know. But still, just the fact that the storylines and I just, I, I started to learn more of the wrestlers. I learned, uh, you know, some of the moves, got to know some of the, the, the wrestlers' names better. And, uh, and of course, world class was different than other areas. While you know it was obvious that some of the put on, you know, some some of the stuff was was just a put on. When they hit in world class, they hit each other pretty hard. They call it stiff in wrestling. And uh, Ric Flair has said in later years that uh, Kevin Von Erich was definitely the the stiffest worker he had ever worked with, or the stiffest wrestler he'd ever worked with. And so it kind of lent that bit of credibility. It's like, you know, you'd watch it, I don't know, I think maybe these two guys don't like each other very much. <laughs> and of course the whole Freebird Von Eric feud started. And, uh, then, you know, after I'd been into it for a couple of years, you had the big 80s explosion. And, you know, Hulk Hogan becoming champion in the WWF. And, uh, you know, Ric Flair becoming the Ric Flair that everybody knows and uh, of course the Von Erich's popularity i uh, talked about that before is that it's, it was uh, around here the, when the Von Erichs came to town it was like the Beatles coming to town and I really got into it and it, at one point as, as wrestling became more popular you started seeing more wrestling shows come on they had it on ESPN uh, that was my entire weekend I would watch the NWA Georgia Wrestling, and I've watched the WWF, I obviously watch World Class. Uh, they had Mid-South on Sunday, you had the AWA in there somewhere. And at one point, I don't remember exactly when this was, but at one point I uh, got bored one night, and I just decided to unhook the cable and put up my antenna just to see what I could pick up. And lo and behold, Late, late at night one night, I came across All-Star Wrestling out of San Antonio, which uh, I would later learn, I guess, as a Paul was a part of the Houston wrestling. But some of the same guys were there. You know, Chris Adams would make appearances there. And uh, One funny thing about it is, uh, at that time, Bruce or Brody was in world class as a good guy, feuding with the one-man gang. And in San Antonio, it was reversed. Bruiser Brody was the bad guy and had Gary Hart as his manager. And One Man Gang was, was the good guy. But I got really into it. And uh, like I say, it's a unique, it was a unique profession. Uh, I think I just, uh, it's, it's uh, I don't even know if I can explain exactly why I became such a fan, but, but I did. It was just so much different than everything else, and it doesn't really fit into one category. It's not really a sport because it's not a real competition. It's not really acting either. It's its own unique thing. And as, as the 80s went on, and of course, you know, the tragedies there in world class, David passed away, Mike uh, passed away, and Kerry had his accident. And there's my phone, had to make an appearance. That's a whole story in itself, too. You know, Kerry had his accident, it was just Kevin. I, and Kevin was actually my favorite, but he wasn't really on TV that much. And, you know, a lot of the, the guys uh, were gone. You, were, uh, you know, Jim Garvin was gone, Chris Adams was gone. 
the NWA, it, it was the beginning of the NWA kind of more or less falling apart. World class had become its own its own thing, its own organization. And by uh, around 80, I started losing a little bit of interest. I stopped watching quite as much. Now, I do remember sitting there watching, uh, sat down to watch it on one Saturday night and Mark Lawrence is going through the card and I just said, you know what, I wonder what's on Saturday Night Live. And I switched over and I never switched back. And uh, I would still pop in from time to time. This was just as world class was becoming the USWA. And eventually they took Channel 11 off our cable system. It's as uh, because, you know, Fox bought out the, C the CBS affiliate there in Dallas. And so CBS was without an affiliate. And so CBS bought Channel 11. That gave us three channels on our cable system that were CBS, so we, they dropped Channel 11. We got something else, but that basically, other than what was on TBS, it cut off, well, it cut, off, cut me off completely from Dallas Wrestling. We didn't have any other channel that, that had Dallas Wrestling. And I just kind of got out of it, and I would still catch a little something here and there. I'd come across it every now and then. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I didn't watch. The ten years later, Goldberg reignited my interest, and I watched WCW for a couple of years. Uh, I, you know, got to a point that uh, Tori Wilson kind of kept me interested longer than I would have been. But it finally faded again, and then got into it a little bit uh, more recently. And uh, when Ronda Rousey came into the WWF or the WWE. And hung out for another couple of years. Got where I like Becky Lynch and I like a couple of the others. But I'm kind of back to just watching highlights now. So I've been in and out of pro wrestling for 40 years. <laughs> it's, I still like it, but I don't, I, I don't know if I can just sit down and watch an entire wrestling program the way they do it now. And uh, really, honestly, it's to a point that if Becky Lynch ain't there, I'm not, uh, I'm not that interested. But I would like to hear your stories. That's the, that was the whole point of this, is I want to hear your story. So if you are a pro wrestling fan, you can leave, you can leave it in, uh, in the comment section. You can send me an email. Uh, I'll put something up on the community thing, too, if, if you want to look for that. And I'll, I'll kind of put some of these stories in a podcast and, and just talk about uh, some pro wrestling. And CRX Paranormal has also said that uh, if, we can, if I can figure out how to do it, we may have a little wrestling chat sometime. Okay, other than that, um, as I mentioned, like I say, work's kind of been a bear lately, and so I've been having trouble getting stuff out. I am working on a new, a new world-class bios. I have that coming out. I've got a couple of other ideas for some non-wrestling uh, content. It's just a matter of being able to get out and do it. Part of that is just the fact that it's been so dead gum hot, and this is going to take a little bit of traveling and the air conditioner is not working in my vehicle right now. So <laughs> once it cools off a little bit, maybe I can get some of that done. Uh, this is already going to be, uh, I think, long enough. So I got the the, uh, the gist of this out. Uh, like I say, let me know your wrestling stories if you are a pro wrestling fan or have been a pro wrestling fan. Okay, if you stuck around till the end of that, thank you. Uh, as always, when it was these vlogs, I try to end it with a little something. I don't even know what that little something is. So uh, here's something. Maybe we'll promote. We'll promote another channel. We'll, we'll take a look at another channel. There's my dad gum phone again. That's why I've been having trouble getting all this put together. All right, thanks for coming along for the ride. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the my wrestling background story. Uh, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Not necessarily in that order. Enjoy the clip that I'm going to show, whatever it is. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey, everybody. Frugal Farmer here. Sorry about the noise, but I saw this beautiful flag flying, and uh, I'm on the road today, and thought I needed to come by and take a picture of it. Well, you know I hadn't posted any videos about my flag stuff lately, and I've been doing that for a long time, calling people out on flying ratty flags. And this flag, by the way, is in pristine condition, being pretty much flown the way it's supposed to be. Well, I got trespassed from a post office. I talked with the guy about a week before and asked him what he going to do about it, and he said they had protocol they had to 
or guidelines, not protocols, that they had to follow. I was like, all right. So about a week later, I had to go in there and pick up a package and ask him, I said, what's the deal on the flags with these guidelines? And uh, he got a little loud and he said, I had to follow guidelines. I was like, well, there's protocol on how to fly a flag. And they had a POW flag under the American flag. And I said, both of them are ratty. I'm like, that's just disrespectful. And uh, anyway, he called me a name and uh, told me to get out or he was coming around the counter. So I said, you know, that's your choice. I was like, come on. Well, anyway, he said he was going to trespass me. So I didn't think no more about it. I went on to work, and there's a store near my house, and I got out that afternoon to go in the store, and I saw what looked to be a sheriff's deputy vehicle on the outside. And sure enough, when I walked in, the guy, I knew him, and he started laughing. He said, I've been looking for you. I was like, is this about a post office by chance? He said, it most certainly is. And both of us just cracked up. And I told him, I said, well, I never threatened a guy. He said, nope. He said, uh, but he can trespass you. I was like, all right, that'll be fine. And I'm like, uh, so I've got a letter off to the Postmaster General and two congressmen at this point.